In the meantime, Brandon Big B is with me in the house. Brandon Big B, are you there? I am here. Okay, Matt, it's so good to have you. And, of course, folks, you know Brandon Big B, co-host of Freedom Friday, and uh, he's been a correspondent here for many, many years, always brings some powerful stuff, and always has a biblical worldview to go with it. Listen, I know, Brandon Big B, you were listening in the first segment, uh, the Michael Brown uh, segment, and uh, talking about the gay revolution and outlasting the gay revolution, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you've got some very interesting observations that you want to give on that. And I, you and I were talking off, offline just a little bit ago, and uh, powerful stuff. I mean, you, you, you've made a connection that I have not, that even I have not thought of. <laughs> even me, I didn't think of it. So uh, I think I was just elevated to a whole new level. You were. I mean, if, 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 you've, if you have outthought the great one sitting behind the golden microphone, you have done something. So tell the folks your observations after listening to the Michael Brown segment. Well, you know, it's interesting because what I want to share is I just want to give people a, a small example from history of what will happen if we do not combat and attempt to outlast okay. the gay revolution, okay. as, as, as Michael Brown so brilliantly stated. Here's a name that nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, can, I can just about guarantee it. Mahmoud Abdul Raoul. Mahmoud Abdul Raoul. Okay. Raoul. Okay. R-A-U-F, yeah. Okay. Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. Oh, Raouf, Raouf. Okay, yes. Raouf. Uh, I, I can guarantee you that probably, uh, you know, less than 1% of the listening audience has any idea who that is right now. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason that I know in my sick mind is because, man, I used to be a sports nut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, I know. And what I know is that one Mahmoud Abdul Raouf was born, Chris Jackson, in 1969 in Gulfport, Mississippi. Yeah. Went on to play at LSU, played two brilliant years of college basketball at LSU, was compared to Pistol Pete Maravich yes. during his playing days there. Actually broke Pistol Pete Maravich's college scoring record, um, was drafted in the first round of the NBA draft in 1990 after two years of college basketball, and was compared to some of the greatest college players of all times. As a matter of fact, his two years of college basketball are still um, talked about as some of, as two of possibly the greatest seasons ever for a single player in college basketball. Wow. Now, what does that have to do with combating the gay revolution? The reason nobody knows who Mahmoud Abdul Raouf is is because he changed his name to that in 1993, three years into his NBA career. Uh -huh. um, he actually had his best season ever the year that he ch changed his name in 1993. Uh, averaged almost 20 points a game that year, was named the NBA's most improved player, just a stellar point guard, unbelievable, unbelievable. You and I watched him play. I don't know if you remember that. We went to, over to Gulfport uh, and watched him play in an NBA ex exhibition game yes. um, if, when he was a rookie. But the bottom line is this. In, 1990, in the 95-96 season, the, the newly found Islam, uh, uh, Islamic religion of Mahmoud Abdul Raouf um, convinced him that during the NBA pregame uh, celebration, he no longer needed to stand and acknowledge the raising of the American flag or the singing of the national anthem. Yeah, I remember. Go ahead. He turned his back on the flag. Mm -hmm. He would sit down and refuse to stand. Mm -hmm. uh, he was. Here, here's how crazy times have changed. This went on for six months of the NBA season before anybody noticed it. Why was that? Because there, the internet back then, it, it was barely in existence. Right. The, you know, the, the, there was no 24-hour, there wasn't 10, 24-hour cable news networks back then. Right. Not every, most people didn't even have cable in their home, right. you know. So six months he was doing this before anybody picked up on it, and a local reporter outed him. Within days of that happening, he was suspended by then NBA uh, Commissioner David Stern yeah. for one game. Uh, he and Commissioner Stern then reached an agreement that he had to stand. They forced him to stand mm -hmm. during the singing of the national anthem. But the agreement was he did not have to open his eyes and look at the flag. Mm -hmm. So he would, he, would, he, would, he would bow his head, for lack of a better term, and close his eyes. And he, he boldly said that he was praying you know, Islamic prayers during the national anthem. Right. Well, that went on for a period of time, and then he just said, enough of this, um, I'm not going to stand anymore. 
Bottom line, he was traded at the end of that season. Uh, within about another year and a half, he was gone from the NBA. He was blacklisted by the NBA because he refused to stand and recognize the national anthem of our country. Right. 20 years ago, 20 short years ago, 1995. Just two decades, all right. Today, he would be hailed as a hero for his sure, bravery. Sure, sure. And plus, he's Muslim, so you couldn't, you know, you couldn't make That's him do my that. My point is, look what we do with the religion of Islam today in the United States. It is celebrated if you speak anything. Kids are being forced to pray to Allah and fools, and if you say the name of Jesus, they will kick you out. Yeah, and so... And so, that's happening in the South. That happened in Tennessee just within the last couple of months. Right, so you're comparing that now to what Dr. Michael Brown is saying about the gay revolution, With and, and, your, slope. and your yes. alarm is the slippery slope because you're using that... That you're using the illustration of that NBA basketball player to show how quickly we have slid down from just two decades ago, kicking off, suspending, and then kicking off out of the NBA a player who wouldn't acknowledge the flag of the United States to yeah. this anti-American, pro-Muslim, pro-homosexual. And now you're saying, now that we've cracked the door to Pandora's box and opened up the homo homosexual revolution, that the same slippery slope is going to happen in two decades from now, we won't recognize this nation. I don't think it'll take two decades. I really don't. Yeah. I think we're dealing with something much more sinister. Oh, I do too. Much more demonic. Yes, me too. Um, and just something... That, that God's not going to allow us to continue to do. No, Listen, I agree. just last week, there was a, 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 I hate to even use the word journalist, the guy's an idiot, he's a criminal. He is, admitted that he is a pedophile, admitted it, came out and wrote an article bragging about it, Yeah. Uh, but he was born that way, Yeah. and so it's okay. And I'm sure that you, you know, I... I and this is so this is so off the cuff after hearing your first guest. I didn't even have time to pull that article, but you may remember what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah, I, no, I read the article. Yeah, yeah, we posted it all over PNN. I, yes, I know, I know, uh, and I can't I think remember who that was. It was on for. it was on Salon dot com. Salon, there you go. I knew it was a super left left, left wing site. Salon dot com. Yeah, uh, but so so there's the point right there. Yeah. And, and well, you know, you said this would happen. I said this would happen. Mike Shoe Smith, many, many, many others said that this would happen. That this is where we were headed. Yeah, well, and here we are. We're living. It's not going to take twenty years. No, we're living in extremely prophetic times. And so, what's going to happen now? This gay marriage ruling. I've said it many times. I'm going to say it again. It's going to shock people because they're not going to think a Baptist preacher would say this. But if the gay marriage ruling, which by the way is not the law of the land, that's another show I've been talking about it. Now we've got dozens of legal experts that agree with it from major universities around the United States. They've been hearing my interviews, and I'm not being facetious, nor am I being braggadocious. I've been on national and international television and radio screaming this for weeks and now finally dozens of legal experts and universities around the nation are using my talking points my bylines and they're saying the very same things and i know other people were saying it with me so i'm not the only one that started this revolution but i but we were instrumental in that right here at freedom friday and yep. and now it's happening but but the point that we're making though it, it not only is it illegal and unconstitutional but i'm going to say this if that ruling was only about two men wanting to get married and two women wanting to get married and call themselves married, I would hate it. It would be unbiblical. It would make me sick, but I could, I could stomach it and go on with life. But that's not what it's about. It's about opening Pandora's box. That's the foundation. They've admitted it. The four dissenting Supreme Court justices said, this is just the beginning. And so it's going to open up the door of bigamy, polygamy, incest, it's going to open up the door of pedophilia and, and a, adults. A father yes. and daughter have been married in uh, New Jersey, in a northern state. Yes, yeah. it's happened. Yeah. A father it's married his 18-year-old daughter. Yeah, it, it, we'll be lucky if this takes 20 months. Oh, I know. I know. And, and so what's going to happen? You're going to have adults saying, listen, I want to marry this child. And the child is consenting. And you got to marry who you love. I mean, who are you to tell me who I can love and who I cannot love? And yeah. I mean, you know, M Muslims already do that. I mean, I Muhammad say, did it. Yeah, Muhammad did it. Nine year old girl. Yeah. 
so it's so yeah, yeah. So, so so I mean, there's the Pandora's box, and I know people are listening, rolling their eyes. Go ahead, roll your eyes if you want. You rolled your eyes when I said we'd have gay marriage in America too, but here we are. Uh, go ahead, roll your eyes. It's coming, and I tell you what else is coming. They're going to start teaching the mechanics of homosexual sex to your children in the public schools under Common Core all over this nation. The mechanics of it, and if you already ro- happening in California, yes, and if, and if you roll your yeah. eyes at that, let me remind you, they're already teaching the mechanics of heterosexual sex, the mechanics of it. They're doing films and books and pictures and movies showing the kids how it's done. Why would they not do homosexual sex now that it's so-called legal and natural and normal? You see, folks, it's this. So what Brandon's saying is exactly right. It's a slippery slope and it's it's demonic and it's going to go quickly, I do believe. I, I agree. Brandon, yeah. I, I agree 100. Hey, Brandon, so. let's let's do this. We're going to take a time out because when we come back, I want to ask you what the mainstream media has been forced to admit about what.